I thank the organizers for this opportunity. Now we'll talk about stress fractures. So we'll go into pathophysiology, risk factors, the associated sports injuries, the diagnosis, and the general treatment. What is the cause for a stress fracture? It is a change in load. A small number of repetitions with large load or large number of repetitions with the usual load or intermediate combination of increased load and repetition. Wolf's law, change in external stress leads to change in shape and strength of the bone. The bone remodels in response to the stress. There's an abrupt increase in duration, intensity, frequency without an adequate rest and remodeling. Stress fracture is an imbalance between bone resorption and formation, which leads to microfracture. There is continuous load, which leads on to a stress fracture. The epidemiology is about 1% of the general population, 1 to 8% of the collegiate team of sports, up to 31% of military recruits, 13 to 52% of runners or athletes. What are the risk factors? History of prior stress fracture, low level of physical fitness at being a non-athlete, increasing volume and intensity, female, menstrual irregularity, poor dietary calcium, poor bone health, and poor biomechanics. The risk factors, other things are, there's a 6% risk in distance runner and in military recruits. 60% of track athletes have higher incidence of prior stress fractures and the recurrence is 13% more if they have had a prior fracture. The basic reason is a poor physical fitness because the muscle tone is not maintained and there is more of impact to the bone. If you compare between both the calf, if the girth is less than one centimeter and the lean mass in the lower limb is less, then the possibility is more if they are not having a good exercise. The intrinsic factors is arch morphologies like a pest cavus or a pest planus or any other bony prominences where the load is more transferred into the forefoot in that particular area and the other biomechanical factors are shorter duration of pronation of the foot, subtalar joint control, tibial striking torque and early hind foot eversion. The extrinsic factors are activity type depending on the intensity. Because of using old shoes where cushioning is not proper or padding is not proper and the shock absorbing is not good, then they go in for stress fractures. Some of the associated profession with the commonest stress fractures is in the ballet it is about lumbar, femur and the metatarsals. In the runners it's tibia and metatarsal. Long distance runner it is a femoral neck and pelvis. Baseball and tennis it is humerus. Gymnast, it is spine, foot and pelvis. For golfers and rovers, it is ribs. Hurdlers, petala. Rovers and aerobics, it is sacrum. Bowling and running, it is pelvis. The classical clinical history, normally what they present is change in training or in the equipment with which they get trained. Gradual onset over two to four weeks. Initially, pain only on activity and it progresses after activity also in course of time. Eventually, constant pain is there. How do you diagnose this? History of sports participation, significant change in training, dietary adequacy for vitamin D and calcium, menstrual history, general history, depending on the emaciation, occupation, past medical history, medications, and history of osteoporosis. Imaging, only 30% is positive on initial examination, 10 to 20% never show up on plain films of x-rays. And if on x-ray you are going to see, it may not be on the first day or on the first week, it normally is on the third or the fifth day or on the second week, normally there is a periosteal reaction or a radiolucent line, what you see. And it is more on the cancellous bone band like focal sclerosis, what you see on the fifth day to the tenth day. Here, 
this is the first day x-ray, you're not able to see anything. On the second week, you will be able to see a small focus area there on the third metatarsal, mid-shaft there. Okay, now the option comes, what is the other best investigation you can do to diagnose it earlier? It is better a bone scan or it is going to be an MRI. Normally 95% show up on the first day on a bone scan and it is extremely sensitive but not as specific as an MRI and it is 24% false positive results are there because even stress reaction can show up. It is very important to differentiate between acute and old lesions. It helps and acute stress fractures, three phase positive is seen on a bone scan and on a shin splint delayed phase only. When you compare it with an MRI and bone scan, at institution level, the MRI is less expensive and some of the institutions do not have bone scans. Their MRI is easy and, provided, and it provides more information than a bone scan. And it is recommended for initial diagnosis and staging of stress injuries. An MRI can be cheaper as I told you in some of the institutions. Some of the studies in shows that bone scanning is highly sensitive but it lacks specificity and the ability to directly visualize fracture lines. MRI provides highly sensitive and specific evaluation of bone marrow edema, periosteal reaction as well as detection of subtual fracture lines. So how I decide between an MRI or a bone scan? MRI is better, usually can be done more quickly, no radiation and it gives you a better soft tissue detail and staging. The general treatment is protection so that we reduce the pain, promote the healing and prevent further damage. Stretching and flexibility exercises, cross training, modified rest for 6 to 8 weeks. Activity modification is very very important. Next slide, rehab exercises also very important to strengthen the muscles. And stress fractures are more common in tibia, metatarsals, fibula, navicular, femur and the pelvis. So we'll have to concentrate on metatarsals, fibula and navicular. Tarsal and navicular, this is the point of tenderness. History is very important. Next, go for an MRI and you detect it. And non-weight bearing cast for six to eight weeks, gradual rehabilitation, if there's a complete fracture, then go for a fixation with bone grafting. So take home points, avoid a delay in diagnosis, image early, rest, relative rest, so that other parts of the body can go in for other training. So correct underlying nutritional, hormonal and biochemical abnormalities to promote the healing and prevent recurrence. Best effort, some athletes will never return back to the pre-injury level of competition due to some specific stress fractures. Thank you.